Right, hello everyone and welcome to Forts. Now, if you saw my uh, games from EGX convention video back in October, you would have seen a slight preview of this with footage that they provided. This came out, I believe it was Tuesday. Um, it's about £10 on Steam, it's pretty cheap. And the best way I can describe it is it's a cross between Bridge Builder with like a physics engine of how you construct a, a structure and Worms with weapons where you blow the crap out of each other. I'll let the game speak for itself. I'll be doing the campaign from the start. It does start off slow because it's a tutorial and it's teaching you how to play. It picks up. So uh, we'll, we'll get into it pretty quick. From the RTFM network, this is Fax News with Sal Vo. With the world's derricks falling silent, the global superpowers are on the hunt for undiscovered oil fields. Here, on the helicarrier ESS Extravagance, rapid deployment forts are being made ready to defend any new reserves found. Their portable reactor technology allows the forts to be upgraded in the field, with weapons such as high-velocity cannons, plasma beams, and laser-guided swarm missiles. These bases are capable of packing a hefty punch. However, black penguin oil geologists are rumored to have uncovered evidence of one last motherload of oil. If found, it could be enough to keep the Eagle Empire going for another decade. But with the Dragon Army and Iron Bear Alliance also coveting new resources, the race is on to be the first to claim the motherload. This is Salvo at the Eagle Empire Fort's basic training ground, reporting for Fax News. Yeah, I'm not going to read out the text, but um, it is quite worth interest, like worth reading at times. It's got some very tongue-in-cheek jokes going on. And you can tell some of them were written very recently as well. Um, hashtag alternate Fax is the one to watch out for reasonably near the start. Just looking around. So this is the reactor of your base, which if it gets blown up, you lose. Its health is down here. Right, so there's a few ways you can build. You can either click on the corner. It won't let me do it because it's trying to tutorial me. You can click on the corner and draw up one specific sort of bar. Or you can grab the bar itself and do the a whole structure um, I think that only recently got added you used to have to do it all manually and it led to some very messy bases let's say because you try and draw one it goes up there and then it starts wobbling because of physics and then you're trying to draw the next one and connect to it and then it, yeah So these are the weaponry worm style things I was talking about. Machine gun to start with. Now you can't aim out here, you have to aim within the arc. So if you were to aim at something, you know, across the map, there is a degree of needing to actually be accurate. Um, it doesn't just do it for you. You can also see this physics. your stuff also do this if we build it up like that early upgrade one of these to being a doorway like the machine gun behind it now the other player wouldn't see this unless the door is open so you can see this door is open so we can see it the door was shut, this would be sort of fog of ward. Left click once to open your fort. Door. And then again to shoot, you can right click to close the doors. Now 
Now you have objectives here you have to complete to unlock oil and there's a sort of an amount you need to unlock the next territory. Say you needed to get four oil to unlock the next territory, you'd have to complete you know, at least four of these blobs. So to some extent later on you will be going back and replaying missions. This is where we start introducing resources. So you've got minerals and energy. Reactor's health over there. The metal. Uh, this one comes from mines, which you can place down on these sorts of resource nodes. And the energy comes some from your reactor, but you can also put wind turbines up to get some more. You've got a little storage thing, so you actually can increase the, the maximum amount you've got there. If I was to put this here, you can see it's only 71% efficient. Let me show you the next bit I want to show you. Quite yet. Okay. Extra mine down. You can see the wind turbine's turning at the moment, but it's kind of unprotected we can do something about that you know it would also stop you building upwards in its current state if we were to select this bracing which is the default one go you will see the wind stops because you've just enclosed it you can do however take the other kind of bracing which is called background bracing so it's there from a structural purpose, but it's not there from a an interfacing with things purpose. So people can still shoot through this and hit your wind turbine. It means wind can flow through, so your turbines actually turn. Higher we go, more wind you get. 94% efficient. Go again. 100% efficient up there. Bring it around over here. You can see here you'd get some wind because some of it's obscured by the building. Right, income mortars. We can repair everything. to get fires just mash the R key over the areas to prepare them Shoot down the mortar shells with the machine gun. Missed. So did he. So even though you're pointing in the right direction, sometimes they just slip through the uh, machine gun fire. So there's not a lot you can do. Other than, you know, build more machine guns and just fill the air with lead. But. Guns overheating now. Oh, we managed it. You can control group it like an RT, uh, RTS. Now you'll see at the moment this is showing me where the arc goes. That doesn't usually happen for tutorial purposes. You'll have angle and power. Normally they would have machine guns to shoot these down as well. Also notice that there's armor on these bases, as well as just the wood. Uh, you do get sloped armor. You can deflect projectiles by angling it correctly. Like I said, it's got a very nice physics engine. Not a 
fan of mortars. The aim is a bit twitchy and they get shot down very easily, but you'll see me use them occasionally. Alright, here we go. We're off to Africa, apparently. You see, we need 6 to unlock the Middle East and 13 to unlock Europe. 9 available here. This one, we got to... Let me just go back to the menu and turn the volume down a little bit. I think it might be a little loud. So destroy the enemy four, create a machine gun group, which we've already done, but you'll see it again. And then we get a bonus if our oh, Derek is undamaged. So here you go. Here's your topical things. We're going to build a fort here and make you pay for it. There's the weak point. They will shoot them down of their own accord if you give them the opportunity to. Though so whether they're accurate or not is um, eh, debatable. Oh, I've got control of them, so we've just lost. There. I was hoping they'd shoot themselves down because I've got them selected, they couldn't. Right, then that lets us get access to that one. Getting that one blob of oil is not necessary, really. We should have to get enough without it. Here you see mortars failing horribly to machine guns. Right, now we get to see my dodgy attempts at structure building. Oh, this one's not too bad. But we had to come from that left base, which would have meant very interesting um, weight distributions. Now the mortars should start doing their job, we just gotta stop the machine guns rebuilding. You'll notice the aim gets thrown off slightly when you fire. Although it tells you where your last shot was, you can't just click straight away.
All right, next one. Destroy enemy fort. Snipe both mortars. Prevent bridge being broken. Ah, now we get to see some of my dodgy bridge building. sniper in here we can use once we connect it not by joining that that to there to give it some strength Ricochet for the other one. Boom. What am I meant to be building? Oh, nothing. Ricochet for the construction of the base as well. Nope. Didn't get that right. There we go. Yeah. Your armor plates need to be angled correctly, otherwise they uh, they may deflect bullets back into your base. That one was obviously set up with that intentionally, but you can still cause that yourself. Here's the, the next topical comment. Robust design, not a problem. <clears throat> Wait, I know what I had to do. Wasn't it? Never mind. the objectives is to upgrade a uh, minigun from scratch so rather than doing it to these specifically we have to uh, build one ourselves but I will upgrade these anyway totally safe what's the problem <clears throat> And now we get to minigun Swiss cheese their base. Also right click to fire one at a time.
figure out what we got next. Draw enemy before, prevent enemy firing a shot, win by chain reaction. Ah. Uh. More topical commenting. Yeah, they're going to be placing some there. Now that to upgrade them to armor piercing. to keep them suppressed with the other two for the minute. No, failed horribly. Yeah. We're getting there. Three. Aim. A little bit higher. One more mission here, and then we move on to Europe. Already got enough points for it. Uh, shoot miniguns through shut doors. So this is proving that the armor-piercing sniper can actually go through those armored doors. Basically, this is a, um, a sacrificial building. We don't have to try and build to it. If I ask time to upgrade. Uh, do that. Oh, no, I didn't want that. Oh, wait. a little bit that should be nice to be angled to deflect but the top's a bit questionable but see how it goes what else have I played but done yes I was in the original alpha for it
like I didn't slope it enough. Do I enjoy Verdun? It's alright. It gets a bit tiresome after a while. No, no, shut the door. Wait for this upgrade to go through first. My slope's not slopey enough, I think. That and they're bouncing off themselves down there. You know, it's hitting here and bouncing up into this. If I went too much further out, I think I'd start having weight issues and it would pull my tower over. Don't have uh, the cables to anchor it to the hillside. Slope right on my armor. 